what's up guys i've got a new blender tutorial for you today we're going to be recreating this really cool but abstract vj loop uh, as you can see it's kind of a sci-fi themed tunnel with uh, kind of grid patterns in it uh, it looks really cool and it's really simple to make as well i think you're gonna learn some interesting things yeah. on the way Right, so once you've got Blender open, we're actually going to keep the default cube this time, but we're going to scale it along the Y axis. So hit S, then Y, and then hit 8. Now come into edit mode, so hit tab, come over here to face select, and we're going to make a tunnel out of this cuboid now. So if you just click on the first face, hit X, delete face, and just orbit around and come to the other side, hit X, delete faces. Now you should be able to see through your tunnel. And now if you grab your camera, so click on the camera, hit Alt G and then Alt R, just to reset the location and rotation. Now we're gonna hit R, X, 90. We're gonna hit G, Y, minus eight, just so the camera sits at the start of the tunnel. So if you hit the tilde key and then hit 8 on the top view and you'll see the camera now starts where the tunnel starts. You can just see that there. Uh, this is important if you want it to loop perfectly. And if you hit 0, that toggles camera mode, you'll see you can just see through the tunnel now. Now to make this an infinite loop, we're just going to animate this camera to go along the path of the tunnel. So just bring up your timeline. We're going to make this a five second animation. So we're going to change the end to 120. Now click on your camera. We're going to drag the first frame to frame zero. This is important if we're adding motion blur. It just makes sure that there isn't a glitch uh, in the first frame. Uh, so yeah, just drag the first frame to zero. And on the Y axis of your camera, add a keyframe. So you're on minus eight on the first frame, come to the last frame, 120, and we're going to change that to 8, and just apply a keyframe there. Now if you hit play, you're going to see the camera moves along the tunnel, and it comes to an end, and then back to the start, and that's how we're going to get a seamless loop. But you'll notice that it kind of eases into the start and the end, so to change that, we're going to hit with your mouse hovered over the timeline, we're going to hit A and then T, and we're going to change the interpolation to linear, and that's going to make it a constant animation rather than it slowing down when it comes to an end. This is quite crucial if you want it to look good when you loop it. So if you uh, now if you hit zero, you'll see it comes to the end of the tunnel and back to the start. Great. Now we're just going to make a few changes to this cube thing. So if you come back into edit mode, so that's tab, and then again tilde key and 8, we're going to go into top view. Just hit A on your keyboard so you've selected everything. Now we're going to come to edge and we're going to hit subdivide. And you're going to get a menu pop up here. If it's just like that, just expand it and just change the number of cuts. We'll say about eight. I think that looks good. Great. And now we're just going to even out the cuts a bit. So go to top view. Come to your loop cut tool here. And we're just going to add some loop cuts along this. Just to make the grid a bit more even. Great. Now click on your tunnel and hit control A. And we're going to apply all transforms and that's going to reset the scale values and the rotation values and any location values that you've changed um, so once you've done that we're going to duplicate the object so hit shift D and just place that now you've got two cubes we are going to just make this cube a bit bigger on the X 
we'll say about 1.4 and we'll say on the Z about 1.4 as well so now you've got sort of a tunnel around the tunnel if that makes sense and we're just going to rename this so on the first, on the inner one we're going to call that tunnel wire and on the outer one we'll call this tunnel reflect now select your tunnel wire so come to your modifier section here, this little spanner add a modifier and we're going to add a wireframe modifier now if you look at that, that looks pretty cool and you can adjust the thickness parameter to your liking I think we'll leave it where it is for now but we might amend it later so rather than just duplicating this whole thing we're going to select the tunnel reflect and the tunnel wire so select both objects and then you're going to hit M on the keyboard and you're, at, you're going to move it to a new collection and we're going to name this collection Tunnels and now we're going to hit Shift A and we're going to go down here and we're going to add a collection instance and you should find the collection that you just created add that and we're just going to move this new instance along the y-axis so assuming that you followed my scaling on the tunnels just hit G Y 16 and you're going to see if I go into top view the new tunnel starts exactly where the old tunnel ends now just hit shift D Y 16 and then hit shift R to repeat the process and just keep pressing shift R until you get about 10 tunnels and now if you go into camera view you're going to see an infinite amount of tunnels and now when I hit play I'm just going to remove the overlays now when I hit play I'm going to get an infinite loop that's pretty cool isn't it right we're going to start shading the uh, scene now so if you just want to save what you got before you go into rendered mode just so you don't lose anything right time to jump into rendered mode and start bringing this scene to life so hit Z then 8 and that's going to take you into rendered mode now the first thing I'm going to do is come to my world settings which is this little thing here I'm going to change the color to black and you're going to see this little light in the scene we're going to just delete that so come up to here to your light we don't need that because we are going to be using emission on the wireframes to actually um, create the effect so just delete this now select your tunnel wire come to your material settings on your tunnel wire we're going to change this to an emission shader uh, if there isn't a material there just click on the plus button and then add a new material and it should your setting should then look like this uh, on the surface change that to an emission if it's looking like this uh, that's because the for some of you this might not happen if this happens to you uh, it's, be, it's because the two materials are linked so if this does happen to you just come to your tunnel reflect and delete this material here it's just me it, it, basically they just join together so anything that you do to one of them will apply to the other uh, you don't want that you want them to be separate materials so back to the tunnel wire we've got an emission material on this one so we're going to pump the strength up to 8 on the tunnel wire and we're going to change the colour you pick whatever colour you want but for this I'm going to go with deep blue might pump that up to 10 actually come up to the top corner of your viewport uh, you'll see your mouse changes into this icon just drag that in and then come to this thing here edit a type click on that change that to shader editor and just bring that in and this is a node based editor for your materials so what you see here is exactly what you see here as you can see if I change the color on this emission thing uh, it's changing the color on the right menu as well uh, there's just two different ways of doing things but this this way lets you go in a bit more depth we are going to add a checker texture to this so hit shift A in your nodes and add a texture add checker texture pop that there and plug the color into the color 
Now let's reset your color because now this is controlling it. So you can see the textures plugged into the emission and these are the two colors that you can work with. Now we're going to change that white to the blue we had and we're going to change this gray just bring that all the way down to black and you're already seeing some interesting things and you can play around with the scale here so I'm going to make it a very, a very low sort of scaled checker so we'll say here and as you can see I'm not really getting the checker patterns I want it's sort of uh, doing a bit of weird glitching on the bottom and the left sides. Um, if you want that, that's cool. I'm going to just map the, uh, the texture to the object. And the way to do this is to use the Node Wrangler plugin, which uh, should already come with Blender. Uh, you just need to come up to here, Edit, Preferences, type in Node Wrangler, and just make sure you've got that ticked. And then all you've got to do is click on your uh, checker texture, and hit Control T, and you're going to get these nodes pop up. And this is a mapping coordinate, and this lets you basically sort of map around the texture. Um, but you can you can play around with these settings. I'm going to plug in UV rather than generated, and then I'm just going to play around with the scale a bit. So say about there. I think that looks good. Now, hit play, and there you go, that looks pretty cool. But I'm going to make it even cooler. So, hit Shift A, we're going to add a mix shader. So just click on that, pop that there, and we're going to plug it in just after the emission shader. This essentially lets you mix in between two nodes. So, everything you've got plugged into that first shader, is controlled by this fact on the left side, kind of like a crossfader. If you ever do DJing or anything like that, it's sort of that's the, that's the left, that's one side of the input, and then you can plug other stuff into the other input and then fade in between the other. Because we have nothing on the right, it's just fade into black. But instead, I'm gonna duplicate these, select them all, hit Shift D, just bring these down here, and plug this emission into the other input of your mix shader and now you should see when you start doing that there's no effect but we're going to change the scale on the checker so maybe like something like that and if you want you can play around with this it's maybe like 5.2 there and now you get this cool effect when you uh, fade between the two but just play around with your scale until you get something you like. And once you've found a couple of patterns that you like, we're just going to do a simple animation. So we're going to just slide the mix shader across. So come to frame zero. Hover your mouse above the fact on the mix shader. Hit I on your keyboard. And then hit Shift D on that keyframe. Just duplicate it to frame 120 and then come to frame 60 and just bring this mix shader all the way to the other side. Hit I on your keyboard over the fact. Make sure your interpolation is set to Bezier this time, not linear. And you're going to get this cool sort of fade between the two. I think it looks pretty cool. Next step, we are going to add some spice to the reflections. So add a new one on your reflect, add a new material, come to our render properties, change this to ambient inclusion, add a bit of bloom, but just drop the intensity down because it's very strong. So about here, screen space reflections, check that and we're going to add motion blur too. Now back to your tunnel reflect materials, so back to the material settings pump the metallic all the way up drop the roughness all the way down and the reflections are very strong so you're going to want to 
come to the base color and just drop that down to a more grayish we'll say about a sort of blacky gray and we're going to go back to our render properties where we had the uh, screen space reflections and all that and we're going to come down to color management and we're just going to change it to very high contrast and we're going to drop the gamma down to about 0.8 and remember if you're not happy with your wireframes you can always come back and you can change the thickness you can make them thinner if you want or you can pump them up, pump them up really thick if you want a even more abstract sort of thing just uh, play around with the settings until you find something you like another thing you can do is come to your camera settings click on your camera, come to your camera settings here you can play around with the focal length if you want a wider angle lens the wider the angle is the faster it looks if that makes sense so it kind of gives you illusion, the illusion that you're moving faster uh, but that's down to personal preference uh, final thing is just to come over here once your scene settings we're just gonna you just gotta render the animation now it's pretty much done so uh, come to file format so yeah come to this output properties on your output change that to somewhere where you can actually find the file just don't have it in a TMP file because it can be uh, hard to find and you don't really want to be messing around with files in there. Change your file format to FFmpeg video. Encoding, you want that as MP4. And output quality, we'll put perception lossless. Leave the codec as H264. And then you just want to hit render and render animation and you're done. Right, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, if you did, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you did make it to the end, don't forget to tag me in your render on Instagram. Uh, I'd love to see what you're doing with the tutorials I'm putting out. And if you want to grab the project file, uh, you can get that from my website. That's nebmotion.co.uk.